The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, and check this out. On February 4th and 5th, the StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Richmond, and this event is going to be huge. We're talking hundreds of players, over $14,000 in cash prizes, at least 18 players qualifying for any SCG Invitational in 2012. Live coverage all weekend long, courtesy of SCG Live, and as much Magic the Gathering as we can pack into one weekend. So make plans to join StarCityGames.com in Richmond, and we'll see you there. everybody and welcome back to another edition of the magic show this is our full dark ascension set review i am here with todd anderson with jerry thompson this is evan Irwin, and we are talking about the green cards today we are going to start with briar pack alpha yet another flash card wants to be briar horn oh man i love these tricks they're so good so good i love that i love like i think briar horn is better but i love oh, these cards you think, you think it's better okay <laughs> better y'all this one's a wolf though that's True. It's wolfy. It, it does it does get pumped by random other wolfish cards. Mm -hmm. However, it does not have uh, was it convoke or evoke? Evoke. Evoke. It doesn't have evoke, and it only gives plus two plus two. So I'm obviously a little biased. So. But it's still a pretty it's, awesome no, it's, trick. It's insane. I, I will I will play this card in my limited deck every single yeah. time. So. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is a, one of the green all stars in limited for yeah. for Dark Ascension. Very for very sure. good card. Um, Clean miss. How you guys feel about this one? I mean, nope. <laughs> another, mm -hmm. another fog variant. Jerry Thompson knows all about playing fogs and some constructed, thanks to uh, Mr. Cranderson and. and yeah. Uh, <laughs> yep. Well, but, I'm glad. Uh, I'm for me, clinging mist. When I read it and I look at it, I'm actually really glad that it says um, tap all attacking creatures. It doesn't just say that all attacking creatures don't untap. Yeah. So they're getting all the vigilance guys. Yeah, so, I had I had to actually... reread it after that because I was like, why is it? Oh, I was like, oh, it gets vigilance creatures out of the way too. Loyal so. Cathar. Yeah, tangible <laughs> virtue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, virtue is a good one too. Yeah, that's, that, that was the big one. Posing virtue so. is good. Mm. Crushing vines. I think like I love it. I think this is one of those cards from development that they made so it can be the, again that twenty third card choice in yeah. your limited deck. I actually think this card might not actually be unplayable in standard. I mean, it kills a flip delver mm. uh, can and a sword and kills swords. Right? I was so. actually surprised that there wasn't a delver in this picture. Instead, there's a little <laughs> owl. But yeah, crushing vines was my twenty like role player type cards that. I'm doing for Jerry TV, and I think oh, it's so close to just being good. If it was like two mana, or so like good. choose one or both. Oh man, if it was both, ooh. Oh, oh sweet. Ooh. <laughs> Kill your Delver and your Rune Chainer Spike. Yeah. Like, bruh. Got you, buddy. Now, Dawn Treader Elk, I like this guy. Yeah, yeah, he's he's okay. I think um, he's not Sakura Tribal. We we were spoiled back then. We I can't so look at this guy spoiled. and be happy. Stupid Elk. God, you're so spoiled. I Dude. know. God. Like Greedy. when I first read this card, I, I mean the obvious comparison was Secure Tribe Order, but like in a in a world where like combat damage doesn't stack anymore, like having two power might actually just be better than yeah. Secure Tribe Order. I well, mean, someone actually messaged me on Twitter and they were just like, um, for my popper cue, would I rather have Secure Tribe Order? Oh no, I'm sorry. Would I would I, would I rather have would I, would I rather have Viridian Emissary or this guy? And I'm like, this guy, not close. Yeah, like, I mean, for for, for older format true? or like, I mean, it de it depends what you're trying to do. Like, if you're right. trying to trade with a beatdown deck, mm -hmm. then you want emissary. But if you always want to rampant growth, then like this thing's better. But there are probably better rampant growths. Yeah, I mean, right. it's, this guy's kind of the in between between Viridian emissary and tribe elder because like with tribe elder, like you just always want to ramp and you just want rampant growth with a blocker attached to it. Right. This like it's kind of the in between, and so it's like in both situations, you know, it's slightly worse than the other option. But right. the fact that like you have the option is relevant. So yeah, this to me like I think it's great for whoever like designed and developed this to, to sort of put it in that spot. Right. You know, like they did know like Sakura Tribal is here and Viridian Emissary is here, and this card goes right there. Right. You know, and I think that's great. How does an elk fetch you a swamp? It finds it in the wilderness. Okay, it's fair enough. Bro. Ploop, ploop, how does it? Swamp. How does it find the island? That's what I want to know. Does it? Does it? Does it cross vast oceans to find the island? Oh, it does. It crosses vast oceans. So deranged outcast is up next. <laughs> I don't know if you if you looked at the picture closely, but it, there's definitely like a pack of dogs just eating some like Robin Hood guy in the background. <laughs> 
And he's just, the deranged outcast is like digging through his pack. He's like, oh, he's got some bread in here. I'm going to eat his oh, food. Oh, sweet. The deranged outcast killed Robin Hood. Yeah. That's awesome. But literally, you look at the bag. It's got like the green hat, you know, that just needs the feather. Like, come on. Yes. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like the deranged outcast was like uh, Little John and he just turned on turned on him and just sucked, <laughs> you know, stuck the dogs on him. But. Wow, so many alters could be made out of this <laughs> card. It's ridiculous. Like, how good is this card? I don't even, this is one card where I was just like, this makes combat impossible. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he can also sack himself, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he's which definitely he's definitely awesome for limited. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how good he'd be in constructed, although, um, just depending on how many like humans you have in your deck. I think it's too mana intensive for constructed. I, just, I think it's definitely playable in block constructed. That's probably true. That's fair. But like this guy, just I mean, not a whole lot of slag storms in block constructed. So, I mean, all I know well, is I looked more. at him, and I was just like. He f seems full of potential. Yeah. And maybe that's, you know, why he is costed the way he is. He looks really, really good. But yeah. ultimately, if you're paying four mana for two plus one plus one counters, that's not that great. Yeah. Regardless of whether you split it up over a couple turns. Yeah. Um, favor of the Woods, limited card for sure. I don't Creature blocks. It's like not the, even a limited. It's just a this, bad one. <laughs> it just seems like another one like the other, like the Shadows card yeah. in black. It's like they it's actually gave you one of the pass outs again. Yeah. It's and like, I think the red one is actually kind of similar. Yeah. I don't like that one that much, but... Mm. But, yeah, so Favor of the Woods. Ah, it's got a wolf on mm. it. At ah. the very least, the red one can fireball your opponent. At, and it has flash. So, like, yeah. you just whichever one gets in unblocked, you just Oh, wait, spend. so you don't like the Talons one? You don't like I that? don't like it. Oh. That card That's why he's, he dumb. wanted it to have First Strike. He's like, if it had First Strike, I'd be all over it. And I'm like, of course you would, because then it would just be infinitely better. <laughs> My God. Not good enough already? Like, all right, I so don't you're all great, tapped yeah. out. You're not blocking this guy. I've got X mana, kill you. Yeah. No. How much mana do you have? I don't know. I figure at most is going to pump, pump it, for like, four. Yeah, pump it for four, right? Like, I don't know. That's not good. All right. You walk into any single trick that they have, <laughs> and it doesn't even deal them that much damage. I mean, you extra one yourself when you feel bad, right? Yep. And right. waste your turn. <laughs> Feed the pack. Feed the pack I like because undying creatures just seem pretty silly with this card. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very interesting one. Um, like, when I was looking over it, it, it took me, like, two reads to really figure out exactly, like, what it did. Um, not being able to sack the token creatures might be a little bit of a drawback in Limited because, I mean, if they can just kill off your creatures before you can sacrifice them, like, you actually just get no value out of the feed the pack, so. Yeah, but holy cow, you sacrifice a werewolf? Yeah, like, yeah. Jesus. Just make about five or six guys. <laughs> yeah, you know, sure, from, like, almost any werewolf period, yeah. you're, but you're getting some incredible value, and the undying creatures of this seems to be, like, incredible value. Yeah. Like, like, this this card feels a lot like Gutter Grime in Limited, where it's, like, if, if it gets going, like, it's very hard to beat. I but, think, I think this card's a lot better. I think the fact that it's like your end step, next turn you get to attack with all these things. Right. If you catch them tapped out, you I get to do all true. the sweet stuff. Yeah. But that's why it yeah. costs an extra mana too. Though. Yeah, Gutter Grime just takes so long to get going. Right. Yeah, I never liked Gutter Grime much because it always felt like it always looked really good and then it just didn't do enough Agreed. and you just died. Right. But this card, like, it, this was one of those that was like the reverse actually. I thought this card was terrible, but the more I've looked at it and thought about it and read about it, I'm just like, mm, actually, it might not be that bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, probably in limited. I don't think it's actually going to hit constructed, but it certainly seems cert really fun in uh, like EDH decks to be able to do crazy tricks and stuff. But what if you use feed the pack with this next card? With the ghoul tree, oh. woo! Going to take my ten ten upside your head. Mm. Yeah, I really oh, want yeah. uh, like some modern dredge deck to be good, just so I can play this card and just like. You know, jump up on the table and just act like a tree just about to eat my opponent, you know? It's a zombie tree folk. Yeah, like, it's crazy, man. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea why this has no black mana symbols in the cost, though. It just doesn't, I mean, it's, sure, like, it's a tree, but it's a zombie. Like, I've never seen a green, mono green zombie before. Now you have. I, I guess I have. <laughs> There's a first time for everything. But it still makes me laugh to think of this guy in your opening hand. Like, you just you just okay. feel like the absolute worst. I just mulled the six. <laughs> Damn. No, then you just Faithless Looting and you just go. There you go. There you go. So. Da, 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 da. Faithless Looting makes everything better. Yeah, it does. So, Grave Tiller Worm, like, I love this. This, for me, is one of those sort of exor uh, exercises in how to make a good limited card and how to craft and stay sort of on the curve. Like, you want there to be a six mana, six, six trampler in limited. Yeah. That's that's happened over an incredible amount of limited environments. And they're like, how do we do it in Dark Ascension to make it interesting? I'm like, oh, sure, we'll make it morbid, and we'll give it, you know, some counters to make it silly or whatever. This one turns into an 8-8, eight, eight, so it's not quite a 6-6, six, six, and it's not quite, you know, not quite an 8-8, eight, eight, not quite a 4-4. Four, four. How do you beat an 8-8 eight, eight trampler in this limited format? 
Silent Departure. See, Silent well, Departure. Like, <laughs> that's my favorite card of all time. Yeah, well, that's faith, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a few ways to get it off the table or to just pacify it, but other than that, like, it's just going to eat you. Big green guy, gonna eat you. Yeah, I just, for me, I like, you know, as a as developer game designer type thing, where it's like you're straddling this line where you want to make a 6-6, six, six, but you can make it better. Yeah, if certain it's, things happen. it's perfect for this set. Yeah, just totally, really well designed. Yeah. Um, Grim Flowering. I'll probably play this card in Limited in some of the self-mill decks. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's basically going to be like six minute draw five. Like, wow. It's not, it's not going to be bad. I mean, um, like, there, there were cards very similar to this, you know, all throughout. Uh, the past couple of years in various limited formats that were just kind of expensive, but if they resolved, like, you just gain so many more cards than your opponent that you just won the game. Yeah, there's and not a lot of ways to draw cards in this format, and with, yeah. like, Knot of the Bone giving you time and stuff, like... Yeah, this, I mean, I this think this will definitely have a limited home, so... I mean, if, if there ends up being, like, some crazy, like, Ghoul Tree, Grim Flowering, like, Dredge deck and Modern or something, you know, that I mean, that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> grim like, you grim just, Flowering and Modern might be a stretch. <laughs> Grimfire and Amaran does seem like a little a bridge too far. I'll spell pierce that. Thank you. <laughs> you and your spells that do stuff. I'll reman that drop. Guy. Yeah, reman that too. <laughs> I would much rather cast seven drops than two drops. Thank you. All right, so the next card is vanilla. So all I will say is I love that art is freaky, freaky. Yeah. Good God. In the world of monsters, it's the stuff of nightmares. Did you see that face? It's yeah. like... It's like Chud and like, <laughs> you know, like the terrible monsters from space from the eighties movies all combined. Oh yeah, I remember those. You remember those? those like the critters, the yeah, uh, whatever the, they, yeah, were? they were. Yeah, that was those critters. It was a critters. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. This is exactly what it looks it's like. A gigantic critter. Oh my god. It's frightening. Hunger of the Howl Pack because we need value. <laughs> this card seems sick and limited. It seems nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Man. Yeah, I mean. Uh, it's it's like combat tricks are already like okay in limited, you know, and this one is just like a combat trick that has a morbid upside that's permanent. Yeah, you know, this and is the one-two punch that like you really want to happen one turn. Like kill your thing with Geist Flame, and then they do whatever, and then you hunger the Hell Pack and just blow them right. They're out. just like, yeah. why'd you kill my tapped guy before you attacked? <laughs> I don't understand. Oh no! Oh. Yeah. This is um. like. Instant version of like travel preparations so that they're just gonna walk into, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. It's very good, I think. Wow. All right then. Increasing savagery. We are increasing it. <laughs> I can't imagine ever beating this card in limited. <laughs> <laughs> this card. Let alone like not not it like you, you're not gonna beat the first iteration, let alone like the flashback. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna make my two two into a seven seven. You're just, I'm gonna bish you every turn, and, and then and again the art. It's yeah. also pretty cool. Yes, it's oh, a so giant cool. wolf creeping in through your window. Oh That's not God. frightening in the slightest. <laughs> oh my God, so good. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's constructed. Oh no, not but close. it's. You I know, don't know, man. People oh, want yeah, to I mean, live the invisible put it, put it, stalker. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say like all these hexproof creatures, man. You just make them. I mean, cards like Rune Chatter Spike are seeing play because of Invisible Stalkers, so... Right. I mean, might as well just go all in. Might and as well go Bant and, like, have the Geist of Saint Trap and the, you know... There's Stranglerood Geist and Dungrove Elder. Like, this card doesn't seem that bad with either of those, mm. like, in some sort of mono green control deck. Right. Like, if you're playing a Wolf Run Ramp Mirror and you, like, do this to a Thrun or something, like, they're going to be chumping with their Primeval Titan next turn. Hmm. Doesn't Fair seem enough. that bad. It doesn't seem 100% unplayable. It just feels like it's not going to be played because these type of effects are very rare. And these type of effects around. usually cost like six mana, not four. It's true. To like put five counters. Yeah, four yeah. is pushing it. Four is good. They want. Yeah, they I mean, to push uh, it. you really just have to compare this to like I guess like Angelic Destiny, I guess, because it's the same kind of cost for a similar effect. Sure. Like it's just a huge boost that's kind of permanent. Mm -hmm. However, like Angelic Destiny does give it evasion, like gives it flying, right? So. Right. Like, Savagery, like, if it gave it Trample, then it, I think it would definitely be playable. Yeah. Well, but, but it also like, gives it Flash. I mean, it also has Flashback, though. Like, I mean, that's true, but the Flashback is almost irrelevant in Constructor, I think. Like, 7 mana is a billion. Well, I'm talking about these ramp decks, like, especially seven. if you're playing a mirror match, you're getting to 7. Right. I guess that's true. Like, with, yeah, I mean, with Dunger Builder, I guess it could be playable. So, a card of John Becker's own heart. <laughs> yep. The Kessig Recluse. I'm gonna like yeah. this one. This is this, is, this is, this is, this is, like, one of the best green commons in the set, I think, like, yeah. for limited. It's... Super powerful, 
like shuts down every blue white flyer in the format and it eats everything. Right. This right. is where like the blue white flyer the blue white player has to have that flyer that can tap or untap a creature mm -hmm. or this card is just going to wreck you. Or bonds of faith. Or like, the, or the yeah, guy yeah. that when he attacks you tap a creature like cuz this card is just going to wreck that entire yeah. deck by itself. Yeah. And then you play uh the untap plus 2 plus 4 spell and then block, you know. <laughs> ah, yeah. spider grass me. Yeah. So, Lamholt Elder and Silver Pelt Werewolf. I like when the grandma turns into the werewolf. Because <laughs> yeah. we have Little Red Riding Hood coming up. So, like, they have yeah. the actual, the entire story <laughs> in the set, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah, the flavor text is pretty cool, too. So, Be wary of the seemingly gentle souls. The weak here were slaughtered long ago. That's right. So, it's like, you know, sure, like, you know, I have big eyes to see you with, my dear, because she's evil and she's going to eat you. <laughs> I think like they just sort of like I think they really wanted that in the in the set. They wanted Little Red Riding Hood, and they were just like, "How do we do it?" And we're like, "Well, we'll make her draw a card when she turns into a werewolf or something." You know, dot dot dot. She starts off, you know, mild old grandma at a one two, and then right flips into a savage beast. Absolutely big and scary. Yeah. Lost in the woods. Hmm. This might be the worst rare I've ever seen. <laughs> Like, I was just like, how bad? There's, there's way worse. There's way but worse, if, but like, if it, it's if, really up there. If the force stayed on top of the deck and it was just like a fog, right? then it would be like, okay, this is worth a reasonable amount of investment with like a Sensei's Divining Top. I'll float a ton, or not, a, a Tropical Island on top of my deck right. to fog you every turn. Oh, but no, you have to put it on the bottom. You know, like, you have no real, like, deck manipulation standard other than Ponder. Right. And even then, like, oh, okay, so... Uh, Ponder, there's one force on top of my deck, so I guess I'll prevent one attacker. One attacker, and so like... It's a five man enchantment. I just felt that like, if they did it the way you were describing it, and it was a May ability, it would be too annoying, like too powerful and too stupid. But it still costs five mana for an enchantment. It still costs five mana, so but worse than but Moat, if it, worse than a bunch of other things. That's fair. I, I just, I don't know, I can imagine there was an annoyance factor that they that they had in mind as the reason as to why it's, yeah. it's I a agree. must. But regardless, it's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I love some magic cards, and this is a this is pretty up there as yeah. well. I, this to me, this is just like unbelievable as a rare. Like, I guess you have to print like some bad ones to make it like not worth it to just open all the packs immediately or something. Well, I mean, you know, you want to have bad cards so good cards look good, right? You know, you want to be able to say this is bad because it doesn't do X, Y, and Z, and this card is good because it does. So, this is embarrassing. I appreciate <laughs> these cards. <laughs> there are very few people that do, but I guess there are. Like I pre in the in the sort of game designer, they have to exist to show how other cards are good. I guess that's fair. that's all I got for it. Okay. I'm not gonna appreciate that card in my sealed decks. <laughs> Man, I feel bad for the guy who gets like the Lost in Woods and the Foil Lost in Woods. Yeah. I'm just like, God, darn, darn. It's like, guess where O2 dropping? <laughs> Predator Ooze is indestructible. By the way, that's true. It, just, it says it right there on the card. It does. It's right there. And when it attacks, it's getting larger. And when it dealt, they when something and kills something, it gets even bigger. Yeah. What do you think about this guy? Eh, yeah. Indestructible on a three mana dude is is pushing it, I think. But triple green, like you can't really do much in that color, I think. But yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I think he's okay as like a one of in a green sun zenith, like mono greenish deck. Like people want to get nuts with like uh, Strangle Geist. And Dunger Builder and stuff like that, but even then, like I'm still, I would still just rather go get a Dunger Builder with it, you know. Right. Like it gets bigger, like at pretty much the same speed, but it has hexproof, which, uh, like might not be as good as indestructible, but it is against like Vapor Snag, right. where like this card doesn't die to like Gunshot, but neither does Dunger Builder. So well, yeah, but this one also dies to tra Tragic Slip, where Dunger Builder. Right, never. right. So, so. Heck, like, so overall, I think like even though like blocking the Dunger Builder with like a bunch of guys to kill it is like, it will kill it eventually. Like, Predators will just never die in that regard. But, right. uh, like, there are things that kill Predator that don't kill Dungrove, so. Right. So next up is Little Red Riding Hood, uh, also known as Scorned Villager, right. who turns into the Moonscarred Werewolf. Apparently, Grandma Moonscarred her. <laughs> Grandma, what are you Moonscarred me for? I thought she, yeah, I don't know. This I, card's just, like, random O, like... Eh, it's it's pretty weird. I've seen it's too good at one green, and it's probably not good enough at green and colorless. Yeah, I've seen worse cards get played for sure, like Wirewood Elf and Block, that type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a Lana War Elf in some form or fashion that turns into like you know the Finhorn, not Finhorn Elves, the Finhorn Elder. Yeah, yeah. Was. So that's fine. That's I mean, Jiraga Tree Speaker, that type of thing. You know, those cards have seen play. I mean, it definitely has a lot of potential in that vein. Uh, I think in limited though, it's going to be pretty huge because not only are mana acceler accelerators like very powerful in general, but 
Um, the fact that like you can play it on two, and if your opponent doesn't cast a spell, like you just flip and drop a five drop, and then they're just dead. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a very swingy card for limited, but even if they keep it unflipped, I mean you're still going to be ahead as long as it stays alive, which is nice. So. Yeah, I mean it can, it, and the fact that it has vigilance, like you know, they really wanted to give you a really nice accelerator. They're yeah. like, this guy's going to get you there. Particularly if it flips, it seems really great. Yeah. Um, Somberwall Dryad. Look, I appreciate those that have webcams and take pictures of themselves in flowery positions for cards. This seems like a webcam picture to me. <laughs> Like yeah, I'm just, I'm really surprised. noticed it, and I was just like, maybe it just needs like some duck lips. Yeah, I was gonna say like, <laughs> where's the duck face? Like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, where's the? She needs to have like a camera going like this, so exactly. it's like a mirror picture or whatever. Right. So, yeah, I mean, this is like this. This is probably my least favorite art in the set. It's just kind of like an embarrassing self photograph or something. It's just yeah. I mean, it's just like of all the the imagination and of all the flavor you have in all the other ones. Like, I you know. The artists probably did the best they could. I'm not saying they did terrible. I'm just saying like it just seems the most boring art. It's the most obvious. Like the girl with some flowers around her. I mean, she's even got eyeshadow on. Like <laughs> she's like she's like emo emo chick. You gotta look pretty in the woods, man. <laughs> she's, she's the emo dryad, yo. Yeah. You don't know how hard it is for her to be yeah, a dryad. To be a dryad. <laughs> I'm just moving on. It's look. Ultimately, somber somber wall dryad is a. It's a grizzly bear. Like, it's a forest walking grizzly bear. That's the end of that card. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beginning and end. But well, Strangleroot Geist is business. Strangleroot yeah. Geist is the business. He He's easily my favorite card in the set. I think that he will single handedly make like a mono green or like a very heavy green deck viable. Um, I compared him to Snapcaster Mage as far as power level is concerned because he's a body attached to a, another virtual body. Like, Snapcaster Mage will generate card advantage in the way that, like, it, and tempo, because it'll let you, like, flashback spells that are cheap or free. Mm -hmm. And Stringroot Geist will, like, come down and either just beat your opponent to death very fast. Like, Virtual Haste is, like, it's attached to a shock. Mm -hmm. And if they block it, it's, like, attached to a removal spell. And then when it comes back, it's, like, another creature. So, like, it's not, it's probably not as good as Snapcaster, <laughs> like, but it, it will single-handedly, like, give a heavy green deck, like, a reason to be heavy green. And for those new players... For real, don't kill it before their attack step. <laughs> like, I mean, I can actually see somebody going like attack step, and then oh, no, the, new, like, the new players like, all right, kill it, and they're like, all right, sweet three. Yeah. <laughs> like, or like they just like remember you, that. you know, you just slam stringer over guys, and they're like, a oh, stringer. They pick him up and read him. And they're like, oh, I'm gonna kill that guy right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that guy's terrible. Whoa, 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 buddy. Yeah. So, so, so just be careful, okay, yeah, just guys. Wait for them to attack. Not, it's not, like the Demi God revenge trick. Like, wait for the, the yeah. trigger to resolve. Exactly. And then kill it. Exactly. <laughs> So, um, Tracker's Instincts is next. This is more mulch. More you mulchy. guys know I love this card. Woo! This card's sweet. Tell us about this card, Jared. Uh, okay, so mulch is great, right? <laughs> right. But when you are casting mulch and doing other things like that, you want to hit things that matter. You mm -hmm. know, you want creatures in your graveyard to power up your other spells like Knot of the Bone, Spider Spawning, or you want other stuff to flashback to keep your engine going. Mm -hmm. But when you dredge into a mulch, it's just like, man, I wish I could have drawn that mulch instead of handed it in my graveyard, but now we have Tracker's Instinct, mm -hmm. and it's perfect. Yeah. It's it's a great card for that type yeah. of archetype. It's in the right colors. It does everything. Yeah. yeah. I also think it's very good uh, at finding the card Splinter Fright, because I think if you're like building a constructed deck around that, hmm. you really want to just all in Splinter Fright like every time. And if you're just like mulching, you're bricking and you're not hitting the, the Splinter Fright, but if you're Tracker's Instinct, you're like that, you're very specifically digging for that while still building up your graveyard. Yeah, and that's nice, fair so. because Splinter Fright, Boneyard Worm, Ghoul Tree, it seems like that's the type of thing they want people to be doing in Standard and Block. Right. They just want to be using the dredge mechanic to let you play big dudes, basically, instead right. of, like, killing your opponent, yeah. which right. is not very fair. <laughs> instead of dread returning, like, Iona, or what? Yeah. <laughs> instead of, like, not playing magic with, like, spells and mana, you know, you're just doing everything from your graveyard. You're like, just like, hey, big dude, and that's fair. Yeah. Like, this is just interesting. This, like, still interacts with your deck, still makes you cast the creatures that you're getting from it, so on and so forth. Like, it's not just playing from your graveyard. Yeah. Right. Yeah, distinctly. Um, Ulven, Ulven, Ulvenwald is probably correct. Ulvenwald Bear is again in that sort of cycle we were talking about. The uh, the black one made the 2-2 two, two zombie. If something died, this one puts two plus one, one, plus one counters when something dies. Solid card. I think this very, very great, good. actually. Yeah, I think this is, uh, on paper, this is very similar to uh, 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 Elder Cathar. 
Uh, whereas like it's just a value guy that when it comes in like I mean it's a little bit different dynamic like Elder Cathar like you didn't want to kill it ever mm -hmm. but this one like it's just the same cost for the same body that does a very similar ability so um, I mean like if, if you have a way to very easily trigger Morbid it can dominate combat by just giving you a much larger guy than they have early in the game mm -hmm. but um, I mean he's he's pretty solid. I also bit. like how he can just be a two, a three mana four four. Yeah, you know he can just be pumping himself, or he can make something that you know that you have that flies really awesome or right. or whatever. Yeah, I mean he's he's solid. I like him a lot. Absolutely. So village survivors, five mana four five vigilance and solid body, random fateful hour mechanic just tacked on nuts and bolts, yeah. limited guy. Yeah, like good for as a four or five vigilance. Like you know that's a good limited creature. Like that will often stall up the ground in some form or fashion. If they don't have some huge werewolf, like you may actually be hit some serious value out of just like, you know, for yeah. you, for you, yeah. for you. Yeah, I'm actually but, like a huge like opponent of cards that gum up the ground. Like I think that makes limited the least fun it can possibly be. <laughs> you know, like if, if I have six guys in play and you have six guys in play and none of us can attack, like that's not limited. That's just sitting there staring at each other. So, like... Well, the, during the, the Fateful Hour, you're going to be doing a lot of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, but the, I do like the fact that she can give all your guys vigilance, so if you're in a racing situation, mm -hmm. like, you can attack them without having to put yourself at risk. Right. Which is, like, kind of similar to, like, what Intangible Virtue does in a token deck. Like, you're able to attack while also being able to block, so, like, you're not... Like, even... It's, like, free racing, basically, which is nice, so... Absolutely. I mean, it's not, like, a great card or anything, but it might be okay for limited, so... Well, another card at five mana, which is a little <laughs> bit better. Your... Your... Is my spoiler Actually, for me! Yeah. Ah! More, more slamming the table. I I'm the, just I believe ready. they wanted that last time. Oh, you threw this girl over there. I was four feet in your face, man. That guy is sick. I love that guy. Todd, is this guy in your mono green deck? Uh, I do have I have zero copies of this guy in my mono green deck. I don't mean to, to burst your bubble, Evan. I'm sorry. So He looks so my, sad right now. Look what you've done. So, okay. So, in my opinion, <laughs> I think Strangle Rugeist should have been, uh, like, slightly better and been the mythic. And Vorpeed should have been, like, maybe, like, a little worse and been, like, the uncommon or just a rare. Don't be all sad. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is huge. If you see this guy, he is ridiculous. He is very big. He's a big, dumb animal. He is ready to take over. I'll tell you what. If he had haste instead of vigilance, he would easily be in my deck. And I'm actually willing to bet that's exactly what he had. And then they tested yeah, him, and they were and like, Jesus Christ, this car is ridiculous. Yeah, and I think <laughs> they were like, but we're going to keep him at Mythic. But No, but, like, Strang well, Strangle Rugeist is, is, like, very aggressively costed and has haste, so it's very good against Vapor Snag. This card is the literal worst card in a green deck against Vapor Snag. You spend five mana, put into play, has no no benefit uh, for coming into play, doesn't have haste, and then they just Vapor Snag or Snapcaster Vapor Snag, and you're dead. Like you just spend an there's, entire turn. There's a Gutshot play. test, and there's a Vapor Snag test. This fills the Vapor Snag test. But he is big, and he does like pound tables he does, and whatnot. He's really angry. <laughs> He's a big, scary, great monster of pain. What I'm trying to say is, buy all of them. They're very good. <laughs> <laughs> you like, don't you like smashing with dudes? I like smashing with dudes. Todd doesn't oh. like smashing with dudes. No, I love smashing with dudes. This I just guy, like the... you don't even have to turn him sideways. You just, you just destroy him. <laughs> That's what he does. Fine. Wild hunger. Wild hunger, oh, indeed. Wild hunger. Combat trick. Uh, gives him trample, which is nice. I like how it gives him trample. That seems nice. I like this card a lot. This card seems really good, actually, I think. Yeah. In the werewolf deck, like, you were always screwed up by those friggin' tokens. Yeah. yeah. They would block your 7-7 seven, seven with the token, and you would just feel terrible. You know, this one makes it a 10 Never eight. again. Holy cow. Like, you know, the five mana ones that turn into a 7-7? Seven, seven? Oh, yeah. Like, those, this seems really good for those guys. Yeah. Yeah, like the plus three power boost is pretty huge, and like the trample on top of that just, I mean, puts it over the top, I think. Like, very solid combat trick. I just feel like this was actually pushed further than I expected it to be. I didn't expect it to be plus three, plus one, and also not that, to have flashbacks. Like. Yeah, I mean, they've printed uh, similar things in other formats. Like, I think Predator Strike was green one, plus three, plus three in trample. Yeah. And that actually, that was an uh, old Mirrodin block, and that saw some very little constructive play with Atog, right. because you could just, like, Float all mana, in. all in Atog, give him trample, <laughs> eat you. And, uh, I mean, like, this card is a little worse than Predator Strike, I think, just yeah. because it costs one extra. But the fact that it's flashback can give you a little more value, which is nice, so. I love Wolfbitten Captain because it is hilarious to me that it is better unflipped 
Ben Flip. Yeah, that's that's actually just embarrassing. <laughs> I, maybe that maybe they wanted to be that way because he's in a cage or something. Like, well, I mean, I don't know. you don't want the one mana like werewolves to be too good. You know, they 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 really tempered them. I think there was, yeah, there's, I there's the outlaw, and then there's uh, there's the what was the red one? Reckless wave. Reckless wave. Thank you. And then there's the wolf bait captain. You know, I mean, captive rather. I, I think that this very easily could have been like a two one for a green, and then it flipped into a three two, and, or something like that. Like because his his plus two plus two ability is like okay, but the fact that you can only do it once a turn means he's still gonna die to gut shot. He's still gonna die to geist flame. He's gonna die to every removal spell in the format. You know, vapor snag like crazy. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> yeah, but like, and when but when he like he's he's very rarely gonna flip a constructed. So there's no reason to make him worse when he flips. Right. And he's not gonna be overpowered and limited. So, uh, when when you make a card that's worse on the backside than is on the front side, like I just, like it's. It's, it cracks me up. I literally think it's hilarious. It is pretty funny. <laughs> like, like, and for me, it's it's almost like a trick. You know, it's almost like a like a trick that development did. It's like, let me show you. Like, yeah. you think these one mana flipping werewolves are gonna be awesome? No, no, no. Like, you're not gonna like this one as much. I yeah. think that's how funny. is he better when he's in a cage? I don't get it. <laughs> how is how is he even in a cage to begin with? That's what I want to know. How, somebody like, how, they, how, how do they get him back in the cage? They locked him up. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if he's in a cage, like on the picture, like he should just not be able to attack or something, right? Like he just he has to sit there, play right. defense, do something, yeah. you know. Like maybe like when you give him plus two plus two, he breaks out and can attack or something, you know. And then gets back but in at the end. Of then he gets back. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Excuse me, guys. I'm done attacking now. I'm doing very sweet. Right, thanks. <laughs> maybe like when you activate him, he, that's when he transforms or something. I don't know. Right. It's it's funny. All I'm saying is that like it cracks me up that worse on the flip side than the unflip side. Young Wolf, however. I think this card's good. Is really good. I yeah. think this card's really, Me too. really good. Could actually make the werewolf deck playable by itself. Like it needed a doom traveler, really did. And this is actually, in some aspects, maybe better than a doom traveler. Yeah, I mean, I really wish um, uh, Mayor of Averbrook could pump Young Wolf on this uh, day side. Yeah. And if he did, I think Young Wolf would be like really good in like that block constructed deck and possibly even like a standard deck. Right. Um, the fact that he has Undying is really sweet though. So. Uh, I mean, he has potential. Although I think you would still, in a standard version, you, you still just want like land or else to ramp into the the bigger werewolves anyway. So yeah, sure. that's fair. I love this card because um, when you look at it in sort of a design development sort of lens, I think this is probably one of the first cards they ever made with Undyne. Yeah, like yeah. literally, they were just like, like, "Can we put it on a green one one? Yeah, sure. Yes. Let's try yeah. it out." And they yep. probably played great. So. Anyway, so those are all of our green cards. Yep. I had a really good time talking about the green cards. <laughs> that was fun. Go figure. Go He's, figure. Uh, there, was, there was table smashing. And <laughs> man! And, there, and was then there was sadness, yes, and then yes, there was yes. mocking. Like, man, this is the whole whole picture. See, that's what I bring to the table. I bring, <laughs> I bring extreme <laughs> sadness to Evan <laughs> Fair enough. So we, we appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We'll be back here tomorrow for our final segment, which includes the gold cards, the land cards, and sort of our, our favorite cards from the entire set. For Todd Anderson, Jerry Thompson, and Evan Irwin, we are tapping the cards so you don't have to. like the fatties.